Welcome back to Retro Depot. I wanted to do a video tonight about Tiny Basic. As you may be aware, I've been working with Tiny Basic quite a bit. I've rewritten the code for the Z80, and I've um, made a few changes to it here and there. And tonight, I wanted to do a video about my implementation of Tiny Basic into the monitor for my G80S computer. So, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the things that I've done right now. So, first off, let's get into BASIC. So, just like you'd expect to get into BASIC, we're actually going to type it BASIC. And it comes up with the um, uh, header for Z80 Tiny BASIC 2.0G, ported by Doug Gabbard in 2017, and then a prompt. Now, just like any other version of Tiny BASIC, you can do the... Um, stuff that you would expect to be able to do. For an example, we are going to... Well, that's not right. Now, let's go ahead and type this out. It's kind of hard to type one-handed and still be able to uh, talk and do the things that you'd like to be able to do. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. I, I feel like sometimes I can't chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. But um, here I am trying. Okay, there we go. Let's run it and see if it works. Hey, it worked. Okay, so you can actually use it the exact same way that you would typically use it. However, I've added a couple of routines. Uh, the first one of note would be qu the quit routine. So if we type in quit and hit enter, as you can see, we go right back to the monitor. That's very handy to have. Um, most people don't think about it, but just being able to quit without having to reset the computer every time, and that, that can come in pretty handy. So either way, that works. Let's go back into basic. I'll show you the next one. Uh, the next one of note is the CLS command. There we go. As you can see, it clears the screen, does exactly what you you know would want it to do. Now, for the next um, set of commands, I'm actually going to stop the video, and I'm going to use YouTube magic to make a magical program appear. So, give me just a moment, and we will be right back. And we're back. And we have that program magically on the screen. Yay, YouTube magic. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over this because this actually has three routines in it that are, or, well, three commands that are actually really handy, as you can tell. Uh, the first one is the out command. Now, the out command is really interesting. Um, I, I haven't set it up yet to be able to use a variable. Uh, so you can't actually uh, take a variable from basic and send it out. But what you can do is uh, read from a port and apply that value to a variable. So I'm about halfway there. I'm still working on uh, the way to do it with the out command because I, I've written a couple of algorithms on how to actually make that happen and they just haven't worked as intended yet but it's kind of a work in progress. I had to take a step back because I literally got a migraine the other night thinking about this. So, And uh, the reason for it being is because I'm very I'm very particular about how I implement code. Um, if anybody ever takes a look at any of my source, I, I am... I'll even go as far to say that I will not use certain commands because while they will be more efficient, they are not as straightforward. So... In any case, um, I'm just going to walk you through this. First off, we're going to send port 83, the control word 9B. Now, on the G80S computer, ports uh, uh, 80, 81, 82, and 83 in hexadecimal, that is. Um, those are the ports for the PIO. Now, the highest port, port 83, is the control uh, register. And the control word 9B is the control word for us basically telling the PIO that you want all ports to be inputs. Now, after we write that to the uh, 
control register we're going to read in from port C which is port 82 hex and we're going to take that value and we're going to place it in A as you can see here now once we have that in A we are going to print the value in A to uh, the uh, screen and then we are going to enter a for loop now the for loop has another routine in it uh, for one to for I'm sorry for I equals one to 250 50 delay now I've written a routine to give us a what was intended to be a one millisecond um, delay actually turned into being a two millisecond delay and the reason for that being is because it was written to where mathematically it should only take a millisecond but because we are using a basic interpreter um, it interprets the code and it takes time to do that so it actually goes from being about one millisecond to being about two milliseconds maybe a little bit longer so I'm estimating 250 to be a um, half second uh, or point five seconds or 500 milliseconds whatever you want to call it but let's just say that delay does about two milliseconds and that's with the six megahertz crystal that is running my uh, personal computer now um, once the delay is done it uh, goes to the next eye and then it actually does jump back to um, line 20 so we're actually going to run this real fast and we're going to run it I c and let me just back up just a little bit on port C at my computer right now I have uh, some wires out or breaking out to a uh, breadboard with a resistor array tied to ground so as it sits right now the port should read zero now I've got another pin that I can short those pins out to VCC that way that they should read one on that particular pin now having said that as we run this program I'm going to take that uh, wire and I'm going to short out those individual pins and show you that uh, the value changes as I do so so we're just going to run this program as you can see it's uh, reading zero and I'm going to short this out to the first pin as you can see it changed to one if I go to the second pin it changes to two if I go to the third pin it should change to four it did and now 8, it did, 16, now 32, now 64, and now 128. And of course that would be the last pin, of the pin PC7. And of course if I let go it goes back to, um, it goes back to 0. Now we're going to control C to quit and we're just going to uh, re-examine this code. Now with the end command there's a couple different ways that you can actually uh, run the end command you can either do in 82 comma or you can use the equal sign and the variable or you could use just a space it doesn't care okay but anything other than a space a comma or a um, equal sign it will probably throw an error I, to be honest with you I've never tested this so let's actually take a look to see what it does uh, let's see if it's minus work okay yeah it throws out what it doesn't know what to do so it does have to be a comma it does have to be a space or it does have to be an equal sign anything else it will probably throw an error unless that something else is a letter and then it will probably read it matter of fact let's try that out yeah it doesn't have any problem doing that so you can matter of fact we can it should be a zero again actually uh, let's do this let's take that pin and short it out on PC7 we're just gonna experiment here now we've shorted it out we're going to do in a oh, ah, that's not right in 82 a okay now that var variable should be an a now let's print a and it should read 128 yeah it, it does so you could also just have a right up against 82 and that will save you a byte for writing programs fantastic
Now, the out command unfortunately only has um, one method at the moment, and that's to out to the port the byte. I'm in the process of changing it, like I said, to where it is variable, but as it sits right now, that is the only way that you can use it. And there is no way of taking that value and actually um, uh, writing that value from a, uh, a variable right now. There's just no way to do it. Uh, a couple other or, um, routines, rather, that I'm trying to implement at the moment are both peek and poke. I feel that uh, modifying memory within basic can probably be pretty useful. Um, you know, I don't so much need it because if I'm going to do something, I'm going to write it in assembly and I'm going to uh, send it over to the computer via serial. Or once I get uh, storage set up, I'm going to use that route. But, you know, whoever buys this computer, if they want it for a basic computer, hey, they may want to be able to modify memory and do things like that. So I plan on adding that just for convenience. It's not something that I'm personally going to use that much, if at all. Um, you know, but hey, somebody else might. Now, speaking of the computer itself, um, I have got more boards on the way. Um, version 1.0 is in production, and hopefully within a couple weeks, we will have these for sale up on our website. You can go check them out there. Um, of course, I'll post a video and let you know when they are um, available. As it sits right now, we do have a couple of the beta boards still available. I'm also planning on selling the new version 1.0 with the proper uh, resistors and capacitors. Of course, everything else you'll have to get on your own, but I will make an option for purchasing the uh, PLD. I'm going to have to get some more of them though. But in the meantime, um, if you don't have a PLD, you can contact me directly. I'll be happy to speak with you about uh, making you one. Aside from that, um, check out the uh, website on a regular basis because I do post there more than I uh, upload videos here. I'll be happy to answer any directions or uh, any questions that you have, of course, in the comments below. But you can also contact me on the website. I have a contact form there that will shoot me an email and of course I'll email you back and we can go back and forth and you can ask me whatever questions you have uh, about this project, about any of my other projects that I'm running. So again, I, I look forward to hearing from you guys. I look forward to uh, uploading more of these videos about um, you know these exotic um, you know <laughs> operating systems from 30 years ago that I'm porting over to my computer mm -hmm. and uh, again uh, you guys enjoy uh, I'm doing this for you guys I, I enjoy doing it as well but I upload it not for myself but for the masses because I realize other people want to see it so if you have any questions hit me up and I'll be happy to answer have a great day guys and uh, have a great weekend coming up as well